this is my story all about bass fishing, daffodil picking, winkle picking, anything to make ends meet. I first got really interested in bass fishing about 25 years ago and there were a lot more fish about in those days but I, I found it really really difficult to begin with. Everybody would catch more fish than I did. And, but sticking with it and, and carrying on I, I gradually got better at it and now I can uh, keep up with most people down there on most days anyway. I can do as well as what most people can. I think looking back over the years I probably could have done a lot more with my life really but I was happy doing what I was doing. I never really had any responsibility until I was 39 and then I got married. A year later my daughter was born. I'm quite fortunate that my wife is a part-time teacher and that helps to keep us going. Bass fishing for me has, has, has been very good sometimes and like all fishing really, uh, not, not so good others. I, I have caught as many as 60 or 70 fish sometimes in a day. There was one particular time about three years ago we went there and never dropped below catching 40 fish a day for four days. And that is exciting fishing. There are a lot more boats doing it now. Not, not many doing it on a commercial basis, like um, myself and a few of my friends. There are a lot of anglers now that are coming down in the manacles. We never used to see them because um, I think really they were, basically they were afraid to come down there. They heard so much about the rocks and the tides and things that they didn't come down there. But um, a few came down and I suppose they spread the word and now there's more getting there doesn't make any life any easier. I start usually at about mid-April, get the boat ready, get everything ship shape and then carry on, well hopefully until mid-late December. The Manacle rocks are particularly treacherous, um, reef of rocks. Uh, I've seen a few near misses over the years. There are uh, a couple of rocks which spring to mind, uh, sort of out towards the Manical Bell or in deeper water. And one is called the Bays and the other one is called the Penguin. And the tide rushes down between these two rocks. And if you've got a strong air tide and a southerly wind or a southeasterly wind coming up through, it's unbelievable. You can be fishing in flat calm water just 100, 150 yards behind you, the seas are curling and cracking anything of 15, 20 feet high. It's very, very dangerous indeed. I love the manacles. Some places are better on the ebb tide, some places are better on the flood tide. Some places at high water, some places at low water. It's not a particularly physical job, but you require a lot of concentration. You can go there on some days and you can do no wrong. Everything that you do falls into place, everything is right and other people will be looking at you and tearing their hair out and wondering what they got to do to try and catch some fish. And other days I've gone there and everything that you do is wrong and you see other people catching fish and you think, oh God, you know, what have I got to do here to get it right? Uh, that's bass fishing. It can be very frustrating. Very frustrating. Now, Jed, this is what we're looking for. That's an edible winkle. Nice bit of point on the top, black shell, easily distinguishable from the horse winkle, which is a different shape altogether and has this mother of pearl effect underneath. These are horse winkles. Don't want those, no market for them. But this is what we want. This is the edible winkle. Mm -hmm. 
little sieve around. Get rid of the stones. A little bit of shells and bits of weeds. Look for any horse winkles. There's a horse winkle. Don't want that. All the rest. Fine. Oh, now look at this, Jen. Come and test your camera on this. Bring your camera in. And have a good look at that. This is all edible winkles. Just simply by pulling back the stones and having a look underneath. And this is what we're looking for. Once we see it gets a little bit more full, I just put them in the pool or down by the water's edge. Sift them through, get rid of all the sand. What a way to have to make a living. <laughs> uh, I quite enjoy it really, it's nice. Some days sun is shining, other days it's raining and it's awful, but you take the rough with the smooth. The bass season finished early in the manacle, so I've been doing this off and on ever since uh, right in the middle of November. And hopefully soon I'll be picking daffodils as well. So. I should just do this in between times. It's been alright, it's uh, kept things ticking over. Anyway. Sometimes, there we are, look at that, just in under a ledge. If I didn't pull back the weed, I would have never known they were there. A little brown cock crab, that is. They live in here in the shallow water and when they grow bigger, they're able to protect themselves, they move out into the deeper water. And he's going to bury himself in the sand. The green crab, this is. Very aggressive. And not quite as fast moving as what the velvet crabs are. They're very, very quick. That's what we commonly call a green crab. I believe they eat them in Spain, I think. I'll put him down again in the water. There you go, scurrying off for a shelter. I only pick these when I get to a certain stage. <clears throat> this is getting to the last of it now really, once we start picking this Duck it flower, this is really getting towards the end of the season. A bit like the fishing, not been very good.
we have to do this, we number all our boxes to keep a personal account of all the numbers we pick. Because we're all on piecework and we don't keep a record of all our numbers, we don't get paid. That wouldn't do. I think if I had to sum it all up, I'd say I'd always been very happy um, in my boat. Some days better than others, obviously. But basically, yeah, I, I love boats and I love the sea and I love bass fishing. Bass fishing and daffodil picking has a bit of a romantic image, I suppose, especially amongst people who come down here to live, but you can dispel a certain amount of that, especially on days when you struggle down a row of flowers with a hundred bunches on your arm, and it's muddy and slippery and you fall over, or when you're down uh, fishing and it's well, the same sort of weather really, very grey and windy and wet, and nothing much doing. Some days then, you wish you'd never bothered, wish you'd stayed in the bed. But yeah, it, it's not a bad way of life. Only time will tell whether anybody could sort of, uh, any of the younger ones who might sort of take on the things like that, but I, I wouldn't really think so. I, I don't really think there's that much of a future in it. But uh, I've enjoyed it and hopefully we'll carry on enjoying it for a while longer.